and welcome to Real Talk with the Roses. We are so excited that you have joined us today because we are going to be answering some more of your questions. You ready for this? Let's go. <laughs> I'm not sure how many we'll be able to get to because you know me, I love to talk. No. <laughs> and oftentimes we can only get through one before the videos become way too long. So we're going to get started and however many we get to, we'll get to. And if we don't get to your question tonight, we will definitely get to it at some point. If for some reason you haven't yet left us a question, feel free to comment down below on this video. And if you would rather send it privately because maybe it's a very personal issue for you, then go ahead and send it to the email address that you will find listed in the description box down below. So, ready to find out what the question is? Yes. Sir. All right, here we go. This question comes to us from Michelle at Way to Sun. And her question is, how do you and hubby settle disputes between each other? <laughs> Do you think we ever have disputes? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know that we have a lot of them. So We've been married almost 30 years, and trust me, there has been many disputes along the way. Like, what kind of things do we do we have disputes about? We probably should get the kids in here for this one because I bet they could have some answers. Uh, the only thing I can think of as far as work on the house, what would we do next? Like, what do you mean? Just when we were talking about different things that we need to do, a lot of times I would say, well, we probably need to do this first, and you would say, no, you think, you know, you would say, I think we need to do this. And the way we settle it is we do what you say. Because <laughs> remember, what's the motto? Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> that's the only disputes I can think of that we've had. Well, that that's probably true in the fact that we don't typically argue like about money or, you know, stuff like that. Like what we're going to have for dinner or what we're going to buy at the store or... There's not a lot of petty arguments about stuff like that. Probably the biggest thing that we, I would say, argue about, if you want to even call it that, would be work-related stuff, maybe. And we talked about that a little bit last week, whenever we talked about balancing work and stuff like that. There for a while, that was a huge source of uh, disagreement for a while about how much you would do off-duty that would take away from family time. Um, I don't really think that we have very many other disputes, but I think that you bring up a good point and something that we probably should talk about because I don't necessarily know it's always been healthy how we've settled so-called disputes or disagreements because you do typically give in to give me what I want. Yeah. And why do you think you do that? Because that's not always, it's not always healthy. And it's not always the right thing to do to give in to, to one or the other person so that they always get their way. Why do you think as a person who, because I don't tend to yield. I don't, it's not that I get stubborn and demand my way. But if I see things from a perspective that I think is going to be better, then I definitely will, um, for lack of a better word, argue my point. Like, I want to discuss it to show him all the reasons why I think that a decision would be the best decision to make so that he can have all of my thoughts to make a well-rounded decision, whereas you typically don't do that. You will either just make a statement up front, like, this is what I think we need to do, and if I say, well, I see it this way, and then you're like, okay, well, let's just go with whatever you want to do, or you'll just ask, what do you think we should do, and then never even give your input, you just go with whatever I say. So, as the person who typically gives in, why do you think you do that? I think it's probably twofold. One, I'm just kind of more easygoing, I think, and two, a lot of things just aren't worth the fight, per se, if you want to call it that. So, I mean, I think there's very few things I just dig my heels in and say, this is what I want. Okay. Because in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter what I want. 
And it doesn't matter why. Like, why do you feel that way? Because most of the things, they're not really significant. You know, they're like, not like life changing decisions. Now, if it was something like that, then yeah, I'd be a little more stern with that. But most other things are just kind of trivial, in my opinion. And I think that answer, because a lot of you probably experience that in your home, whether it's the wife being a little more, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say easygoing, because I don't think I'm difficult going or whatever the opposite of easy going is but um what what would be a better word for that uh what what would be a better word for that not necessarily easy going but just when we do our personality seminar and we teach about the different personalities you are very much steward you're a navigator, but you're very much steward. Steward personalities, and if you guys would ever like us to do something on that, we certainly can. It comes from some information that we had learned from Gary Smalley. You can look up his website online. I'll have that link for you down below, who talks about the different type of personalities. There are four major personalities that everybody operates in, and sometimes the husband is a little more along the steward line, more uh, caring, um, softer as far as not necessarily passionate to uh, push your way all those kind of things on the on the quieter end just willing to do what anybody else wants to do if it's going to make them happy and sometimes it's the wife in our case you are the more pliable pliable one and i'm more of you know I'm, what you want and you're going for it that's no right what. yeah because i'm very much captain my personality is very captain, like out of balance if I'm not careful, captain. And I'm a passionate person. I don't know how many of you guys have picked up on that through the vlogs or just different kind of videos that we may have done personally, like we do our vlogs and they can kind of get an idea of what our personalities are through that. I'm a very passionate person about everything. I kind of, I would almost describe me as intense. Would you? A little bit. <laughs> a very, very intense person. Like, I live every minute of every day with a lot of passion. No matter what I'm doing, I go at it 100%. I'm like a 100% or nothing. If I can't do something with a lot of passion, then I'm just not going to do it at all because that's just the way that I am. So, when I do have an opinion on something, we'll go back to the example that you gave about whatever we were going to be working on the house next. If I had an opinion on what we needed to do, I felt very strongly and had reasons that I could list why I felt strongly. Whereas on the other hand, you're kind of just like, well, I just think we need to do it this way. But you couldn't even necessarily tell me why you would think we need to do things a certain way. It's just what you thought. And so therefore for you, it wasn't worth trying to explain because you didn't even really have a rhyme or reason. Would you say? Probably. Yeah. And I think another point that you brought up that I want to discuss with all of you, because some of you have probably found yourself in this place too. When you said a few minutes ago, to me, it's not worth the argument. I think that has been one of the things where we have struggled a lot throughout our marriage. And it's a big issue for a lot of marriages is the issue of communication. Because for you, if we have a difference of opinion, you automatically think we're arguing. Even though we're, we're not, we're discussing opposing viewpoints. But for you, you have always felt that it was an argument. Would you, would you kind of say that's true? Yeah, but I think a lot of that's because of your personality, the way that you come across. Yeah. It's and, just the way that I receive it. And a lot of times it is the way I come across. And a lot of times it is the way you receive it. I may not be coming across anyway, but the way you perceive any kind of disagreement. And... Why would you think that is? Because that can help a lot of people. Because I think probably if a lot of you were honest, whatever, you and your spouse, whichever, you know, if in your home, maybe it's your husband who is a lot more passionate about things or who comes across more in a um, matter-of-fact kind of way. And maybe you are the more pliable one as the wife. And if for you, when your spouse is talking and they're very passionate about what they feel is right or wrong, and it doesn't mean they are right or wrong, and I've told you a million times 
just because I'm passionate about something doesn't mean that I'm right. And what's, what's your smirk for? Because, like we all say, you usually are, so... <laughs> well, most of the time, <laughs> it does turn out that way. But I have always said, just because I'm passionate doesn't mean that I am right. However, in the moment, obviously, I believe, since it is my opinion that I am right and so I can come across as though it's going to be this way and, and so you have always felt like for us to sit here and discuss this is going to be an argument and she's going to be mad and you would just rather I not be mad right mm, yes yeah but that's not always healthy no but it's safe <laughs> temporarily <laughs> true Maybe temporarily, and that's a good point to bring up for all of you guys, because for me, when I know you're just giving in because either A, you want me to shut up, because I'm going on in a passionate expose of why I believe something's right, or because you do genuinely just want me to be happy, so you're willing to just let me have my way on whatever it may be, that angers me because I like the discussion. But for me, like I said, there's a lot of things that I really don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. Because it's, in the grand scheme of things, it's kind of small. Yeah. Ex like I said, except on those major things, then of course... I'd be a little more argumentative or a little more opinionated, but I mean, just like when we were looking for a new car, what, nine years ago now, I didn't really care. So you said you found a car that you liked and that's what we went and got. <laughs> <laughs> but there was never any argument about no, that. No, that's what I'm saying. But I didn't really have a strong opinion on what kind of car, what color to get. And see, that is so hard for me to understand because I am so opinionated and passionate about everything. I mean, even if I'm just going to go grab some nail polish to paint my nails, there's a reason why I've chosen that color and I'm very definitive on why and can explain to you in an hour's worth of explanation on why I've chosen it. So... That has that has been hard for me to learn and understand through the years is that there are times he really just you really just don't care and like it's hard for me to understand that because I care about everything. Just like restaurants. I mean most of the times I don't care. I care. <laughs> <laughs> but there are those few times to where I say I really like to go here. But I think those are few and far between. And I think sometimes, though, on the flip side of that, because there, I'm, I am a pliable person as far as I'm not going to, it's not life or death for me, and it's not worth a huge argument just to have my way. I'm not a selfish or self-centered person. I mean, obviously, we all can be at times, but to just demand my way at the expense of everybody else. That's not how I am because I truly do. I like the discussions and I like for everybody in the family to put their input in no matter what it is. There's many things that we decide as a family, not even just as a couple because we want to know our kids' opinions because everything we decide ultimately affects them too. And so there are times that I will say, take your, your example about the restaurants, you guys choose. It really doesn't matter to mommy today because most of the time it does, but there are some times to where either I'm just not hungry or I'm just not feeling anything. And I'll say, you decide, or you decide, or you decide. And even then, you still will not choose because... But there is one restaurant that I will put my foot down every time. <laughs> Golden Corral. <laughs> Don't ask me to go to Golden Corral. <laughs> actually did go there about a month and a half ago. You did finally give in to their request because the kids love it. They like to go there because it's all you can eat and you get... I could care less about that. You can get salad and your entrees and your desserts and 
I like it pretty good, but it usually makes you sick. It hasn't the last couple of times, mm -hmm. but usually it would make you sick to your stomach when we would go. I guess they use MSG or something on their food that never agreed with you. And so you just... And it's not very good. Yeah, he doesn't like the taste of it. Mm -hmm. So usually when they ask to go there, it's immediately no, no. No, but you did finally give in and let them go a few weeks ago, about a month and a half or so ago we went, and uh, they enjoyed it. I can stomach that about once a year. <laughs> don't ask anymore, that's about it. So, the, going back to her question about settling disputes, how we just settle disputes between us, we honestly don't have... A lot of the things that we would that we argue about because we have arguments just like every other couple does and there's been some pretty rough patches in the road and we'll talk about all those in the future but the things that we typically tend to argue about the most are